What's good, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Paul the Fifth, Fifth, and for today's video, I'm using this painting that my friend Susan made for me. I'm showing you how I'm going to make that into a thumbnail for my YouTube page. You ready? Let's do this. As you can see, I've got some lighting going on in here today. Over here, I've got my GVM 800D set on red. The hue is zero and at 35%. My other 800D, I'm using it more as a key light. It's set for a very light blue. The hue is 150 and again at 35%. I also have my Hagibis RGB handheld light, and as you can tell, it is set on red on the brightest setting possible. I'm currently filming myself on my iPhone 12 Pro Max on the forward-facing camera at the moment. And for the money shot, I'm using my iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's back here set up on a tripod. I've got the grid enabled using a 2.5 optical zoom and an exposure of negative 0.7. Let me show you those settings now. All right, it is time to take a look at my camera setups. At the moment, I'm being filmed on my iPad on the forward-facing camera, so the lighting and audio probably isn't the greatest, but guess what? This is a behind the scenes, so I don't think it matters. Let me go ahead and take a step back here and I'll show you my camera settings. Right here, my studio phone is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I've got it on my standard settings. This one really doesn't matter. This is the one I want to give you the settings on. Let's record. And as you can see, I've got my iPhone 12 Pro Max set up here. I've got the grid mode on. I have a 2.5 optical zoom and my exposure is at negative 0.7. If you don't know how to get those settings, let me take just a moment and show you those now. Camera settings 101. Step one, grab your smartphone. For me, I'm using an iPhone 12 Pro Max. Step two, let's go into the settings. Settings, scroll until you see camera. Click, here are my settings. For you iPhone users, halfway down you'll see grid. Make sure that is enabled with green. Exit, step three, pull up your camera. For me, I have a folder labeled photography. Photography camera. Two ways to find exposure. For you iPhone users, if you click on this top left corner, you'll notice this bar at the bottom. When I scroll to the right, you'll see things get darker. If you scroll to the left, you'll see that composition shows up. It's a lot brighter. The second way you can find exposure, scroll up, pull up, you have some items down here. This is your exposure, same concept. Now we can clearly see composition, and yes, this is my YouTube folder. All right, I am back, and I want to show you how I plan to capture this painting for a YouTube thumbnail. Here we go. I want to make sure that this picture is perfectly within that grid. Let's turn this over just a slight hair. That might take some finagling. All right, there we go. Well, my goal for this thumbnail is to not have, as you can see here, my couch and then the light obviously in my backpack is in that shot. I don't want those in the shot. I just want to capture the painting itself and a little bit of that glow from the red underneath it. Here's how I plan to do that. Let's pull this back just a hair. All right, and as you can see, I've just got the glow. I've got some of the blue. I've got the foam in there. Oh, capture. Let's take a look how that turned out. Not bad. I did notice that there's a reflection from my key light in there, so I'm gonna move the key light back a hair to see if that fixes things. Okay. Now I'm noticing something right in here, but I think that's the way it's set up. Let's pull this back again. 
Yep, it's definitely still there. So let's do this. So I ran into some issues with one of my key lights that was really interfering. And you can see it right here, it's still in the actual picture. So I may have to adjust it again. But let's pull this back and see what happens. Yeah, you can definitely see the light in there. So. Let's do this. So I thought the issue was my key light. However, it's not, it's this picture here. Let's pull that off the wall. All right, just took that picture off the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my key light again and let's see what happens. Okay, not bad. A lot better, I think. Let's make sure that this is fully centered. Okay, pull that back. So now we can see that we just got the glow here and no light. I think we may have solved our problem. And we'll hit this. Looks good, we have a little glare. So I'm gonna adjust the barn doors just a little bit here. Okay, let's try it again. Pull this back. There we go, lovely, looks nice. We've got a little bit of the illumination from the light underneath. We've got some of the blue from my key light down here. Everything looks pretty clear. Other than I've got a little bit of something right there. Let me try one more thing. Whatever that is, is still right there. But let's pull this back again. Okay, I really dig it. The only thing is, I think I wanna move the key light or the RGB light over just a little, see how it's off to the side. Third time's charm, right? Hopefully this is it. Let's pull this back. There we go. Now you can kind of see that that glow is a little more natural. It's a little more centered. I still feel like it could come over just a hair. Well, let's do this. Let me turn this one on. all the way up and we'll put this right here that definitely adds an effect making sure this is centered we'll pull back oh my gosh that definitely makes it a lot more noticeable okay let's go ahead and capture our photo Beautiful. Let me do one more thing. I'm gonna take our exposure down just a little more. Okay, I took my exposure down from negative seven down to negative one. Let's see what happens. Let's pull this back again, make sure everything is centered. And now we cannot see the RGB light but we've got the glow from the light so let's capture that beautiful i like that because it highlights the bottom of that picture here's the overall outcome i really dig this ultimately i'm gonna do some cropping on that i'm gonna put some words in there make it so the thumbnail really sticks out okay 
So right now I'm filming myself on my M1 MacBook Pro internal camera. It's 720p, I'm using the Photo Booth app and I've got my wireless lav connected. So hopefully this audio isn't terrible. But how do we get that footage from my iPhone over to my iPad? Airdrop, my friends. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. In the bottom left corner, we see a little square, and that is your share icon. It gives me some options. The first thing I see is AirDrop. In order for AirDrop to work, you'll want to make sure you have all of your devices connected to some sort of Wi-Fi, and you'll also wanna make sure you have AirDrop enabled to everyone. So now I'm seeing three devices that I can share this picture with. My Legacy Studios Nash iPad, my LSN iPhone, or my MacBook Pro. I'm gonna choose my iPad. Click, it makes the sound, boom, there it is. Now that I have that onto my iPad, here's my process and the app that I use for creating my thumbnails. Back to being filmed on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I'm using the forward-facing camera and I have my lapel mic connected to that. I'm hoping the audio quality is good. I'll just show you how to get the picture of this painting from my iPhone AirDrop to my iPad. And now that it's there, let me show you the app that I use. It's called InShot. I'll show you where you can get it and how I use that app to turn that picture that I took on my iPhone into a thumbnail and try to capture your attention. Here we go. If you are an Android user, you can find InShot in your Play Store. And if you're like me, an iOS person, you can find InShot in your App Store. Due to the terrible internet here at the studio, I've already got the app downloaded, but let me show you how I use it. First thing, oh, check out this lens flare. First thing I wanna do is pull up my photos. That is a picture of this that I took earlier. Let's pull up InShot. You have three icons in the beginning. You have video, photo, or collage. For this, we'll choose photo. This pulls up your camera roll. We'll choose this here. First thing we want to do is crop this to size. We'll choose 16 by nine on the ratio and check to save. Now we may notice that on the size, it is completely blank and not captivating. So let's change that. We'll go back to canvas and choose a background. Let's try black. Nah, not really captivating my interest. Let's try red. That's a little better. However, I think that I want to choose red for the lettering and the font. Let's try blue my favorite color all right now we're getting somewhere i dig that hit the check mark to save and let's go to text here's how i think i want to word this meet susan the creative behind the painting meet susan let's change our color and we'll put that into a red and then we'll click this icon and make that bigger. Meet Susan. Okay. And then we'll put the creative behind the painting. Click that again, make that a lot larger. Pull this down. Oh, now we can't see it. Let's put that in black. Ooh, there's a silver. I like that. Let's pull that down a little bit. And then let's make that a little bigger. And then pull that up. Save. Ooh, I like it. So to announce that this is part two of Angel's Airwaves and Frequencies, I think I'll put that right in this section. I don't want it to be too busy though. Let's see what happens. Angels. Airways. And frequencies. And frequencies. 
scenes. Yo, my name is All the Fear. And episode two. EP two. That works. That's not doing it for me. Let's pull this over the top. Top. Much better. Let's pull that over there. Yes, I like that. I'm happy with that. To save in this top right corner, we click this icon. Bam. Home. If we go to my photos, there it is. And that's how I make my thumbnail from beginning to end. Wrapping things up for today. This has been so much fun for me, and I really hope you enjoy watching my process from beginning to end of how I plot, plan, execute, and the process of making a thumbnail for my YouTube videos. Everything from lighting, camera settings, actually taking the picture, airdropping the picture from my iPhone to the iPad and using that InShot app, then putting it all together. That's all for today, but I truly appreciate you watching. Why don't you let me know in those comments if there's anything else you would like to see from me. If you enjoyed today's content, you already know what to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Show me some love with a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that notification bell so that way you are in the know when I drop new content. This lets me know I'm doing something right. Okay, until next time, my name is Paul, Paul Fizz.